Coach Beard back in Miami. Why now? Why come back in this time? Uh, you know what? It's it's not even a matter of why come back because I just look at it like I'm a servant. You know, I'm a servant of God, and wherever He wants me to be, that's where I'm gonna be, and I'm gonna do everything there because I know I'm here for a reason. So for me, this is a great opportunity for me to get back to home, uh, get back to my roots, and really pour into these kids what was poured into me. What does Miami mean to you, Kevin? Oh, man, uh, brotherhood, um, uh, accountability, uh, family. Um, it's really helped me, help mold me into uh, the man I am, the father I am, the husband I am, um, just because of that one word accountability. And so whenever something's wrong with the family, it's my job to make it right. And that's what, it, that's what it's mean, meant to me. What's been your primary focus just for the spring with this group? What are, you, what are you sort of trying to get them to, what point are you trying to make with them just for the other practices? I'm trying to help them eliminate the fear of failure. And once they can understand that right now it's okay to fail because the only way to get to success is by learning how you fail. And once they understand how they're failing, now they can stop doing that and do the next thing to, to help them succeed. And once they see it, that starts the believing part. Speaking of your roots, you know, you and Jacoby George kind of have a similar background that familiarity from both playing at Plantation. How's that bond been early on and what should we see from him this year? Oh, it's good. It's good. Um, it's so funny. Chris Lamont is like his mentor. And I was Chris Lamont's mentor when he was in high school. And so um, everything that I put into Chris, he's put into Jacoby. And so now that I actually come here and I'm coaching him, it's like, it's a <laughs> because I know you got somebody that's going to continue what I started and it's easy for him to listen to me because he knows I've, gone, I've been down this road. And, and so everything he does, I already know the process before he did it. So as it happens and he fails and he's frustrated because he's a competitor, I can talk him through that frustration and say, bro, this is how you learn. So. Once he pushed past that, that failing part and he does some things that gets him some success, that's the exciting part. And that's where he f feels like whatever coach says next, I'm going to eat it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it and I'm going to go apply it as much as I can. Kobe, uh, he was a guy who really flashed last year in the second half of the year. We saw it the Virginia Tech game. It was unreal. Where has he improved from what you watched on film to maybe just these first you know, eight practices? Well, I think the main thing for him, him being as big as he is, when you look at the NFL, you don't have a whole lot of six, four, six, five guys that are dominant. And I think for those guys being that big and that size, they tend to work harder instead of working smarter. And their, their knees, their hip flexors, their back, their ankles, it takes a lot of beating. And then once over time, they can't sustain themselves. So. The awesome part for him is trying to teach him how to learn how to work smarter instead of working harder. And that's when things will become even more simple. And then he'll get the technique and the fundamentals as well. There, there aren't many 6'5 receivers. You obviously played with one here when, that was pretty special. Absolutely. Have you had him and Andre hooked up at any point the Not yet. Not yet. Um, the main thing that I'm trying to get these guys to understand who they are first. I, I can bring legends in and they can talk to them but if they don't know who they are for themselves then everything else is is pointless from a recruiting standpoint um how exciting do you think this offense is going to be to the local elite south florida wide receivers it's going to be really exciting um that's why i'm so trying to get everybody to come down and just see it because now once you come down and you see it in the beginning stage and you still see plays being made when the games come and you see the results of what you know was put into it that's what's going to make everybody say i'm staying home i want to be a part of this and i want to bring this place back to where it's supposed to be not where it was but where it's supposed to be because we can't do 2001 again we can't do a do-over we have to create that 2001 in 2023 for that for this year. So that's the part that I'm really excited about. 
What have you seen from the two young receivers, Robbie and Ray so far? You know, it's funny. Um, a lot of guys come, in to come into college with a lot of hype and a lot of accolades, and sometimes they don't really know what they don't know. And they're learning that in order for me to be a wide receiver, I have to master my craft. And they have been out athleting people all their life right now. And so now learning that I need to learn and develop my craft and gain fundamentals and technique to make the game easy, it's really cool to watch it and see them. And I mean, Ray Ray's on the jug machine practically every morning before practice. And it's like, why is he on the jug machine? Because he knows that he has to develop to be a natural ball catcher to play receiver. So they're seeing the issues and they're attacking it on a day-to-day -day basis. So a few more questions for Coach Beal. We've seen Tyreek Hill out here sometimes. Has he talked to you guys at all? No, no. The, um, the only guy that has talked to, to the guys is uh, K.J. Osborne. Um, he's, he's done a really good job. He, he's known me from a distance. So he started out in Buffalo and I was at Toledo. So he saw, he know what it looks like from a distance. And uh, when he came to Miami, I came to a, a seven on seven tournament and I ended up running into him. And it was like, man, if I had you as a coach, all those types of, um, you know, we, 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 we spoke. And so now that I'm back, we spoke the other day um, and it was like, we got to get together. And so when he talked to the guys, it was really cool because what he ended up doing was reiterating everything I've been saying to him, that this game of football is about work. Everybody's talented on this level at this point. So what's going to separate you from the next guy is your work ethic. And so when you hear hard work beats, beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, it's not a cliche, it's real. So. He was just reiterating that, um, I guess you could say, he was reiterating the standard and the foundation of that. Coach, and then also the receivers that are, that are on your roster right now, you've got different skill sets, you touch on Colby's size, and obviously you got, how important is just versatility of the receiver group, different skill sets to, to be, how essentially have a good offense to get past the game? Oh, it's, it's, it's everything. You know, um, today we were down a couple guys, and I, applauded my guys after practice on the fact that we didn't miss a beat. There were plays still being made. There was nothing had to be held up because of where's the receiver? Everybody was dialed in and paying attention. So I'm trying to teach those guys just like it was back in the day. If you're down, all right, you can stay down for too long and the next guy's going to come in and now you're going to come back and your spot's going to be gone. So I'm trying to really drive home to those guys competitive nature and nothing's given to you everything's earned I was ask last about question Isaiah Horton because we heard so much about how, how much is progressing just your initial impressions of him and what he needs to do to take his game to the next level very talented young man um really excited about his future some people need to develop fundamentally some people need to develop emotionally some people need to develop psychologically and I think with him it's a little bit of all of it because he's been so much bigger than everybody all his life, he's just been able to bully and do what he wants to do. Now everybody's his size. So he has to learn the, de the details, the technique, and the fundamentals that's going to help him separate himself from the rest of the pack.